Welcome into my kitchen again. I'm Donna Miller. Glad to have you with me. Today we're going to do whole grain tortillas. Easy and quick to make. You can make a lot ahead of time or of course you can make them fresh. I'm going to give you a couple variations. The reason I'm doing this is because actually um, it's for everybody who came to the retreat this past weekend in the end of September and we didn't get a chance to get to this so I'm doing it for you guys so that you can have some instruction with your um, recipe booklet that co that's at home. So if you have your booklet, you can open it up and follow it, but I'm going to half the recipe because this makes a good bit of tortillas. So we're going to get started. I have already milled um, some soft white wheat, some kamut, and some spelt. Doesn't matter what uh, variation or what quantities of each. The reason I pick these is because they're low in gluten, so it'll make a nice soft tortilla. You're not using any yeast in this recipe, so you don't need any gluten. So, and we happen to like spelt tortillas. They taste good, and I happen to have some soft white wheat already in the freezer. And I just wanted to add some kamut in because we haven't used much of it lately. So, I'm going to use two and a quarter cups of this flour mixture. It's freshly milled, so all the nutrients are there. It smells really good. And there's two and a quarter cups. And I'm going to put in anywhere from half a teaspoon to up to a teaspoon. This is, again, a half recipe if you're from the retreat looking at the um, instructions. This is half that recipe. So anywhere from half a teaspoon to a full teaspoon of either sea salt or real salt and a quarter teaspoon of baking powder, sorry, soda, a quarter teaspoon of baking soda, nut powder. There you go. Now what we want to do with these is mix them, incorporate them with a dry whisk or a pastry cutter or a fork. I like a whisk with dry stuff because at least then I know it's all gotten mixed together. Plus I'm getting ready to use it again. So, gosh, that really smells good. I'm hungry. It's lunch time. Now we're going to take one eighth of a cup of extra virgin olive oil. I like the rich, we like, we like the rich and fruity flavored stuff. So, okay, here comes a variation before we get started. You can add, um, you can use canola oil, you can use coconut oil, which is some of my favorite oils to use. And you can add a variation here to make it a sweet tortilla by tossing in um, a teaspoon of sugar, maybe two, and just a half teaspoon of cinnamon. It's really, really good. You can wrap things in it for desserts and it's just a nice sweet flavor. Alternatively, you can make it more savory by putting garlic salt in place of the regular salt and keeping that good, rich olive oil. So, back to the recipe. Here are the steps. Once we're putting in the oil of our choice, we're going to do a slow drizzle and incorporate this, and you're going to watch how these change just a little bit. Right now it looks like flour, and, and it looks like a mess. I'm <laughs> shooting it out of the bowl. We're going to incorporate this to make kind of a mealy looking flour. I'm going to start clumping some pieces together and just a slow drizzle. This is where amb ambidexterity would be a nice thing, although I'm not ambidextrous. So you can see how they've stuck together a little bit. It's almost like making a pastry with a liquid oil versus like shortening the, the disgusting stuff that's bad for you. So it makes kind of a coarse looking, almost a meal. To this we're going to pour in, I'm not sure which hand's better, we're going to remove the whisk and we're going to pour the water in slowly and this is actually, I did it already this morning, the weather's good so this is not picking up any extra moisture but you may not use the entire amount of water. If you're using fresh milled flour, the, the flour will tend to pick up some moisture in the air. So just kind of eyeball it if, if you feel like uh, you got to stop. But you're going to get this to a kind of a very light and wet consistency for the dough. Just pour a little in the middle to get started and do a little mix. And then I usually like to drizzle around the edges and put it down. 
do a mix. The reason you drizzle kind of all around the sides is because it helps to pick up those little bitty pieces that just stay dry along the edges. Um, because you do want this to be kind of a wet dough. It's not going to be uh, very kneadable like a bread dough, so it's going to be a little bit wet. I'm going to go with the rest of this because it did measure out perfectly last time, so we're just going to finish this off. Be really loud. You don't want to knead it, you just want to give it to where it soaks up that last bit of water. Kind of cutting into it to where it soaks up that last bit of water until it's almost gone. No puddles left. And you can hear how light it is right now. It's very light and very wet. Then you take your saran wrap, simply pour your dough out into almost the center. And roll it up. Now, the reason we roll it is because it's got a little less surface to cover when it's cooling now then rather than in a big ball, then the middle of it still stays a little bit warm. Um, this is warm water that we use, but there's not a real temperature necessity. Usually warmer than your body. It's just because you want to try to keep the oils nice and supple while you're working with it. That's why it's warm. And then we take it like this. See how light it is? It's very, very impressionable. It's, I'm barely having to touch it. It's not like kneading bread. It's really light and airy, and, and you can even see the little dots of where the oil is incorporated nicely throughout the whole dough. We're going to put this in the fridge for 10 minutes, up to half an hour, but you really don't want it to go too much longer than that because it'll get kind of hard to work with. Be right back and show you the rest. Okay, this has been in the refrigerator for about 10 minutes. And you can feel, well, you can't feel, but I can feel that it's a little bit stiffer than the other dough. Um, and what we're going to do is show you how to make them into equal size tortillas so that hopefully they'll fit in, if you have a tortilla, warmer. Um, but then again, I'll show you how to make them bigger if you don't like them that small. So what we're going to do here is weigh them. The entire dough... I'm terrible at math. Look at that. Awesome. One pound. So I should get 10, 10 ounces, 10, 10 ounce um, little balls out of this. So spray your hands just a little bit so that you can work with them and start weighing them. This is literally just a ball between, like Play-Doh between your fingers. A little big. I'm just going to make a few of them for you, just to show you um, the steps, rather than have you watch me do that whole strip of dough. Close enough, it's 11. And then the way I like to do it is to line them up because you want to work with the one you did first, first. Because sitting out warming up just a little is about what you want it to do before you press it. You're too small. And you also want to try to get to where there are not very many cracks inside here because it'll make your tortilla kind of, you know, split apart. Um, so make it nice and smooth as a ball. Some people have an electric um, tortilla press, and I think it's an awesome thing if you know how to work it. For some reason, I didn't do well with one, and it, it cost too much, so I ended up opting for a very cheap little manual tortilla press. Um, somewhere I envisioned cooking my tortillas on a flat rock one day, so it works well to have a tortilla press that doesn't require electricity. So we're going to just do, let's see, four of these so that I can give you a few variations of how you can get them to work. Aren't they cute? 
I'm getting pretty good at the size. All right, last one down. We're going to start with the first one out. And we'll come back to those. Okay, you might wonder why on earth my tortilla press is wrapped in plastic. This is a, this is just a, this is just a, um, Kind of an inexpensive tortilla press. I don't particularly like this surface. It doesn't release the tortilla the way I like it. The plastic, however, has two possibilities. It helps release the surface. It gives it a little bit of playroom so I can pull it out. And it keeps it from touching this stuff, which I'm not totally sure what it is. Uh, so what I did was split a plastic bag and just put one side on each. It's heavier than the saran wrap so it'll stay here. It'll stay here through several tortillas. Okay, we're starting with our first one and strangely enough you really want to put it in a different position than you might think. If you put it in the middle you're going to squeeze them out to here. So you want to put it just slightly closer because that's where the pressure is coming from. Wherever your hinge is you want to put your tortilla. Whoa! First you want to spray this. Nice. You know, put your tortilla a little bit closer to the hinge. And then, press. Hey there, little guy. These are going to be little ones. You might want to flip it. There you go. Now, this tortilla is a little bit smaller, so whatever I weighed it at, you might want to go a little higher. And then it's a quick trip. I had like one-tenth of a pound, so it's a quick trip to a low griddle. And by low, we want to be around two on our griddle. That's a tiny. He's cute, though. And here's a little trick if it's not thin enough for you, if you don't like, if you, if for some reason it's not thin enough, I'm going to show you how to make the next one thinner. Thus, it shall make it bigger as well. Same basic thing. Get a little closer to here. Press. Nice and easy. And I always do a little turn just to make sure I've got it even on both sides. It tends to thin out right there at the top. And as you noticed, I sprayed my counter because I'm going to roll it out just a little bit more to make it a little thinner. If you're rolling a circle, what you want to do is roll it in quarters so that you try to have a, a good <laughs> a real circle. Uh, when I don't press it first, we end up with tortillas that look like the United States. So pressing it first does help that. And that made it a little bit bigger. Wow, that's a good thin one. And then flip. And you don't have to have anything special to flip it. They're usually not so hot that you can't touch it. You've probably washed dishes that are hotter than that. I actually think I like the thin ones now. I'm gonna do those. Some greased up and ready to go. And you can see on this side how it just kind of lightly bubbles. That means it's about ready to turn over. And it's nice and pliable for your meal. Okay, and as they come off, you can put them in your tortilla keeper if you're going to serve them right away. Um, and then they'll stay nice and warm. Now, if you're not going to use them right away, it's good to layer some wax paper in between them. That way you can freeze them. That way you can put them in the fridge. You can keep them for a little longer. So, 
I hope you try this recipe. Super simple, very few ingredients. You can pronounce all of them. If you look at some tortillas in the grocery store, maybe not so much. Very easy to make these yourself and serve healthy whole grain tortillas to your family that taste much better than the whole wheat ones you get at the store. This has been Time in the Kitchen with me, Donna Miller. And if you came to the retreat, I hope that you try this out with the recipe that I gave you at home with the, the recipe book. And if you didn't come to the retreat and you'd like to have a class in your area, please contact us at millersgrainhouse.com. You can see a little bit about it over on the classes link or just send us an email. Be happy to work out something and come and do a class with you. Thanks so much. God bless. Have a good day.